Okay, so in this video, <clears throat> I'm going to continue something that I mentioned in a previous video, uh, and that was to look at the acid catalyzed hydrolysis mechanism of nitriles. The book doesn't go through this, okay? So I wanted to go through it simply to show you that, um, first off, it's very similar to the mechanisms that we saw recently in class, addition of uh, uh, water or amines or alcohols to carbonyl compounds. The only difference being that we're starting with a nitrile rather than a carbonyl, but other than that, the mechanism is really very similar. So let's start off with a nice and simple nitrile. We'll just use uh, methane nitrile here. Keep it simple. Acid catalyzed process. All right. So the first thing that's going to happen. Well, let's see if we can figure out what the first thing is that's going to happen. Here is our acid. So what do you guys think is going to happen here? We have the nitrile. What's going to happen? Well, the electrons from the nitrogen are going to grab that hydrogen. Hopefully that is clear to see. Water, as we've seen before, is a weak nucleophile and because of that all of our reaction steps are equilibrium as we saw recently in class. So each one of these steps is going to look like so. So, and balls, let's done it again. Alright, let me try and uh, erase that. Now we have a hydrogen on here. Um, because of that, we have the plus charge on the nitrogen. And we've generated some water. So, what do you guys think is going to happen here? All right, I'm just going to draw on the lone pairs that are reacting. Otherwise, I'll drive myself bloody crazy. Okay, we're talking about hydrolysis um, with water here. So what do you think the water is going to do? Where is the most likely place that it's going to attack? Well, if it's acting as a nucleophile, it's the most electrophilic part in the molecule, and the mechanism is very similar to that of a aldehyde or ketone. It attacks the carbon that has the electrons pulled away from it by the nitrogen, and in the process breaks that pi bond, or one of those pi bonds, nitrile having two pi bonds. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change the geometry of our carbon and make it trigonal planar. So I'm going to draw out my nitrile like this, and on there, now I have added my water. All right. Now, you remember what we said before on mechanisms like this. You want to make sure you carry on your plus charge from step to step. So where is our plus charge needed now? Well, it's on the oxygen. So there we go. All right. So what's going to happen here? Well, we have more water around here. So I'm just going to write that out here. And if we have more water around here, what do you think the water is going to do? Well, actually, the water is going to do what all the other reaction steps are doing. It's going to try and dissuade or remove the plus charge from the oxygen that bears it. And so what happens is this. All right. Well, let's try to let's draw out what product we get here. Now, you guys have seen this functional group with a doubly bonded nitrogen to carbon before. Do you guys remember what the name of that functional group is? If you said imine, you would be right. We have created an imine. Now this is a special type of imine because it's, it has an alcohol on it as well. So this guy right here, this is an imine but with a hydroxy group. This is called a hydroxy imine. So, what do you think is going to happen now? Well, the oxygen from the water could grab a hydrogen and go back to the starting material, or could go back here again. The equilibrium shows that could happen. But if we're trying to get to a product here, the only other species that has electrons to attack is the nitrogen. So let's see if we can show that. Nitrogen grabs that hydrogen, kicks those electrons onto the oxygen, all right, we'll do these arrows down here. And let's see what we get. 
Now you're probably noticing there is what looks to be a website link down at the bottom of this page. And that website link is actually to a really kind of neat site. It's actually the um, help site for a different organic textbook by um, a very famous author called Kerry. And it's actually the website where I found uh, this mechanism. So I've, I've put the link there so you can check it out yourself because uh, it's kind of useful. Or at least it was useful for me in trying to um, get this sorted out anyway. So what we've done here is we have protonated our uh, imine. And we are close to the end of our first reaction because this hydrolysis of imine, uh, this hydrolysis of nitriles actually consists of two separate reactions. And so rather than putting all the steps on one page, there wouldn't be enough. Uh, there wouldn't be enough room for that. I'm going to stop at the first intermediate. And the first intermediate that we're going to get to is actually a, an extremely important and very, very stable functional group containing oxygen and nitrogen. And I'm going to see if you guys can figure out what exactly it is as we get closer to drawing it out. Well, notice that we have the nitrogen with the four bonds to it. It's not happy. So it wants some help. So I said, please help me. I really don't like having four bonds. Well, the water could come in and grab that hydrogen and go back to here. Um, but once again, we want to proceed towards our product. So the only other option is for the electrons on the oxygen here to do exactly, well, to do something similar. Now, they can't directly remove a bond from the nitrogen, but, but what they can do is they can do it uh, like so. If the electrons from the oxygen kick in here and then kick out onto the nitrogen, this is an exact analogy to the addition mechanism for alcohols and amines to uh, carbonyl compounds that we've seen before. So let's see if we can draw this out. We have our oxygen which now has formed a double bond. And then we have our nitrogen here with these two bonds. So the nitrogen is happy, but now it's the oxygen that bears the plus charge. All right. Can you guys see what functional group we are, we are getting to here? Well, I'm hoping you guys can. We are very close to a functional group known as an amide. Now, how are we going to go from our from this to our amid product? Let me draw out what our amid product is going to look like. And also bear in mind, this is an acid catalyzed process. So when we have our amid here, we need to figure out how to regenerate H3O plus. So we're going to have some H3O plus here. So how can we form our amid from this and generate H3O plus? What exactly has to remove this hydrogen? Well, of course, it has to be the water. Now, I drew it over here. I should have drawn it a little bit closer, but oh well. Here comes the water. It's taken a long path, goes to there, and that gets to our emid. All right. Now, the, the ultimate reaction product here is we saw in the last video. This is actually hydrolysis of nitriles to carboxylic acids. And you can see this isn't a carboxylic acid. This is an amide. So on the next page, I'm going to go through the mechanism for the hydrolysis of the amide. And we're going to see it's somewhat similar to this. So I just didn't want to put all the reactions or all the steps on the same page. All right. OK, let's see. So we're going to move on to our next page here. I'm going to draw out our amide. I'm going to draw it out just a little bit differently. I'm going to draw out the carbonyl up at the top here. So in order to get to our product, because our product is going to be a carboxylic acid, so with an OH where this is. So you can see that overall, this is going to have to leave, and OH is going to have to come in. Now, this is acid catalyzed hydration, so this is going to come in, the, the OH is going to come in from water. But we have seen already water is not a good nucleophile, so we need some way to activate the 
electrophile. Okay. And that is exactly analogous with what we saw here. Water poor nucleophile needs an acid to activate this carbon. And it's exactly the same here. So let me draw out the water, or the acid, I should say. So what we have here is the electrons on the carbonyl are simply going to go here, break that bond, put the electrons onto oxygen, do another equilibrium arrow. And so what we're going to end up with is an activated carbonyl group, one that is more electrophilic. Now that that oxygen has three bonds and is extremely unhappy. So our water that we've also just generated in the last step is going to say, hello, I'm going to come in here, kick those electrons up onto the oxygen. All right. Remember, our ultimate goal here is to remove this, this NH2 group. NH2, like OH, is a bad leaving group. So we are going to have to do something uh, to that NH2 to make it leave. Now, do you remember what we do to OH to make it into a good leaving group? Well, we add a hydrogen to make it into H2O. And in a very similar way, we're going to do something uh, exactly the same to NH2. We're going to stick a hydrogen on here, so it's going to come off as NH3, more commonly known as ammonia. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now, we are a couple of steps away from getting there, but that's our overall goal here. So we have our protonated uh, water that we've added in. We still have lots of water around, and so what happens at this point is that we have some water here, and it's going to come along, grab this hydrogen, kick those electrons onto the oxygen, How about these for some funky equilibrium errors? All right, so let's just draw out what we get. If I can draw this out in any meaningful way, there's our NH2. Here is our OH. And here is the other OH that we have just deprotonated. All right, originally it was water. We deprotonated just to give it an OH. Now, I'm going to draw on three sets of lone pairs here because, as you have seen, we have just generated some more acid. All right, so I'm going to draw that out here. Now, let's just apply some logic again and say, well, if the water attacked here, gave us some acid, we have three sets of electrons that could re-attack that hydrogen. Now, I'm hoping you guys can see any one of them could do that. If these electrons attack the acid, we go back to here. If these electrons attack the acid, we can go back to here, which can happen, hence the equilibrium errors. But if we want to get to the product, then it's got to be the nitrogen that actually attacks that hydrogen and taking us further along the, with the mechanism. So we get to a situation now where we have this. So, oh, all right, let me try and draw this out a little bit better. Let me just get rid of that. I don't actually need to draw out all three bonds here, so I'm just going to say this is now NH3. All right, so we have our OH up here. Nothing's happened to either of those, so we have that one down here as well. Remember, plus charge, plus charge, plus charge, plus charge. We've got to have a plus charge here somewhere. Where do we have to have a plus charge? Well, it has to be on the nitrogen, of course, because now the nitrogen has one bond too many. And now we have created nitrogen with a good leaving group, or as a good leaving group. All right. Now we have lone pair here and a lone pair here. How do you think one of those two OH groups can assist that NH3 group to leave? 
because they are going to assist it. They're going to push their electrons down and kick out the NH3 as a leaving group. To be honest, it doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to do this one up here. Those electrons go in. This is the best leaving group, so those electrons go out, and the NH3 comes off. So what we end up with is carbonyl group that we've just formed, except it's a carbonyl group with a hydrogen on it. Methyl group is still there. And I'm just trying to draw the correct geometry here. So I have my OH group. It's kind of swung around a little bit. This was tetrahedral. This is now trigonal planar. All right. And we have our ammonia that we've also formed. All right. The ammonia could come back in and go back to here. But again, we're trying to get to our final product. And we're actually, we only have one more step to go. Because what am I missing on this structure right now? What am I missing? Well, if you shouted out a plus charge, you'd be right. And the plus charge is on the oxygen that has the one too many bonds. Uh, now, we also said this was an acid-catalyzed process again, didn't we? Uh, we had some acid here, but we used it up. Now, we need to generate our acid product, and you can see that this is very close to our acid product, and we need to regenerate our H3O plus as well. And I imagine you guys can see we've seen this sort of thing several times now. The acid is going to be regenerated by attacking this hydrogen, which also, in the process, breaks that bond and actually gives us our carboxylic acid final product. That is our final product, and we've regenerated our H3O plus as well. All right. So two, two sets of mechanisms here, both very similar, uh, giving the overall reaction, or giving the mechanism of the overall reaction of some nitrile, whatever that nitrile may be, simply under acidic conditions, hydration with water, to give this, the corresponding carboxylic acid, all right, via the amine. And we saw that on the first mechanism page. Now, just just a quick word about the first page here. This, this is the link. And... Um, I don't think this will work for you guys, because right now I can put my cursor here. Well, uh, maybe I can. I'm not sure. I can put my cursor here, and I can click on that, and it'll let me um, go right to the page. Uh, unfortunately, you guys can't do that, because this is going to be a video that you're watching. So all I can say is, sorry. This is the link, though. If you just type this into your web browser, it'll take you right there. And actually, I think it's, this is arranged by chapter. This is arranged by chapter, so you can look at all sorts of other things, too, in more detail than our book shows. Anyway, that is the mechanism for acidic hydration of nitriles to acids. And I'm hoping, I'm seriously hoping that you guys can see what I've tried to do is just show that there is a path of chemical logic here, electron pushing to go from starting material to intermediate amine or intermediate amide and then from the intermediate amide to the final product as the acid. Uh, and that's it. Okay.